Welcome Sabbath School members. Today we are on lesson nine, but before we proceed, I would like us to seek the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, glory and honor be given to you. We thank you for bringing us to this Sabbath School lesson for this week. We pray, Heavenly Father, that as we go through the scriptures, we will be able to sharpen up our minds and to hear you speak to us and we can be able to understand you diligently. Be with the listeners worldwide. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As I have alluded, today we are on lesson nine and you may agree with me that this quarter we've been talking about death, dying, and the future hope. Most speakers have already uh, alluded the state of the dead. They have already said many things about where the body goes, where the soul goes when people are dying. But one thing for sure that I know about death uh, is that it's a painful experience. Uh, in management, we always encourage people to manage uh, the situations. But when it comes to issues of death, these are issues that are beyond our control. We cannot actually manage them, but it's only God who can be able to give us the strength to pull through and cope with the situations that we are passing through. Our memory text for this week is coming from the book of John, chapter 5, verse 39. Allow me to read uh, this text. Um, it says, You search the scripture, for in them you think you have eternal life. And these are they which testify of me. I like the part which says, search the scripture. And I like the part which says that it testifies about me. Dear brethren, I know if you don't have a data in your head, you cannot be able to deliver anything. But when you have got the scriptures to back you up, you will be able to stand for the word of the Lord and you can be able to stand for what you believe in, no matter what type of a situation that you may be passing through. Knowing the scriptures can actually help us in the uh, situations that is in season and or even out of season. God reveals himself through the scriptures uh, and we can be able to fight the devil with authority when we've got enough information when we have got uh, the scriptures and we can be able to fight diligently. Unless we are rooted in the scriptures of God and we are grounded there and we are able to say exactly what the Bible say, it says. Otherwise, if we don't have the, enough information from the scriptures, the devil can play with our minds. The devil is so cunning. He can twist what we already have in the Bible and be able to twist it in such a way that we end up failing to understand exactly what the word of God wants us to understand. This week, we are talking about the contrary uh, passages that have already been, uh, contrary passages that go along with what has been already alluded in the uh, previous weeks of the lesson. Um, there are these contrary, uh, contrary uh, messages that are there in other passages in the Bible, they try to, to help us to actually understand what God wants us to really understand about him. For example, when you look at the situation of Lazarus and the rich man, this is the story that is found in the Bible in Luke chapter 16, verse 19 to 31. It's a well-known passage. But when you look at it closely, you'll find that there are many people who actually distort the way how we are supposed to understand it. And when I read and try to analyze that one, people, some people, they want to make this passage look like maybe it's a real life situation which is there. And yet at the time when it was happening, this scripture, it was actually sort of a parable which was being shared so that people can be able to look at their situations and try to interpret their situations according to the way how they live. We have learned from the beginning that um, the doctrines of natural immortality of the soul is, have got an error, and the devil uses some of those scriptures to say that there is life after death and the dead can be able to talk to us. And yet the Bible does not say that. In the book of Luke, the situation of the rich man, 
we see here a scenario where, where uh, the rich man passed away. When he died, he found himself in hell. But this was a parable. It was not a fact. It was not a reality. The explanation which goes along with that is that uh, when, you are, when you are still alive and you have all the riches that you have, our social status cannot be able to determine our destination. We cannot be saved because of the riches that we have. Or what we know, or what we, 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 we need to understand here is that um, status and social recognition is in the present situation cannot take us to heaven. Even when we are poor in spirit, like this poor Lazarus who was a beggar, at the end of the day, he put all his thoughts, he put all his uh, needs in the, in the hands of the Lord. And he was, he was able to be saved because of the trust that he put in the hands of the Lord. So the internal destiny of each person is decided uh, when we are still alive. What we do today, it determines where we are going to land tomorrow. Luke chapter 16, verse 25 and 26, uh, uh, it asserts, it affirms what I'm trying to, uh, to explain. On the resurrection morning, God will awake the dead with their way and their character of lifestyle. They are not going to be changed in any way because that's the way how they were, they've been when they were still alive. So we are at, we are at the mon moment granted that opportunity and privilege to be able to shape our lives in the way how we want it to be in the future. Allow me also to say another passage that is, um, that is usually uh, distorted by the devil. Uh, he uses the scenario where you find that the, 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 uh, the scenario on the cross when Jesus was dying. There were, there, there were two thieves, we read in the Bible, uh, where two thieves, one of them repented, and Jesus promised to say that, truly, you are going to be with me in the kingdom of heaven today. But does it mean that this, uh, this uh, thief ended up in heaven on that particular day? The truth is that, no, it's not true. Why? Because even Jesus himself, when he died, he did not go to heaven immediately. What happened to Jesus? We know he was laid in a tomb and he rested there for three nights and he resurrected on the third day. And when he resurrected on the third day, there were some people who actually saw him. And one of them is Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene, when he went close by to, to the tomb to go and check, he found an empty tomb. And he was, she was worried to say what could have happened to the body of Jesus. Does it mean that Jesus at that time had already gone to heaven? As if she was still wondering uh, what was happening, she heard a voice saying, who are you looking for? And Mary recognized this voice. And when she recognized the voice, when she was called Mary, she turned and looked at the master and she answered, teacher. She was rushing to go and embrace Jesus. But Jesus said, no, 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 don't touch me because I have not yet ascended into my father's place. And therefore, we are saying here, that means resurrection itself or death itself, at that time when people die, they rest, and the spirit also will be resting somewhere, but not that it could have gone to heaven. And therefore, we are saying, Jesus did not look down at the mourn mourners at that time when he was dying and start looking at them the way how they were embalming their bodies and so forth and enjoying life to say, I'm sure he could have changed the situation at that time. But Jesus had power. That's one thing. Although Jesus had power to change the situation at that time, but he did not do, do it because he had a strategy to be able to, re, to, to, to redeem the sinner like me and like you so that we can be able to enter heaven to resurrect on the resurrection morning when he's going to come to take his righteous. When you look at Jesus... It means that Jesus, he is God and had so much love, neither death nor life can separate us from uh, his love. So in Romans 8 verse 38 uh, and 39, it says that, for if we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. If we die in the Lord, we 
temporarily lying in the tomb, temporarily lying in the tomb, awaiting for the day of resurrection. When people die, they know nothing. The next thing they would find themselves in, is in the presence of God on the day of resurrection. And so you die with the way how you have been. You die with the way how you have been carrying yourself or how you have been living. Um, this is the reason why, while we are still alive on earth, we suffer pain and penalties. There are sorrows that we have to pass through. These are the sorrows that we have to pass through, and yet the joy shall come at some point when we resurrect to meet our loving Savior. Look at the promises that were given by Paul, who said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Therefore, there is laid upon me a crown of righteousness. Are you, ca are counting, are you counting yourself to be one of those people who are going to embrace the righteousness on the resurrection morning? There is another, another section of these passages in the Bible which is often distorted. The preaching to the spirits in the prison. This scenario, God has always been at, the, at work to redeem humanity from the day when he fell into sin. This passage is found in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 13 to 20. When you look at this passage, I like the verse, uh, verse 18, 19, and 20. Some interpret interpreters say during the period when, they, when, when he was in the tomb, they, he preached to the spirits in the prison. This kind of teaching is false teaching, is false interpretation. Jesus did not preach to the, uh, to the, to the spirits at the time when he was in the tomb because the Bible tells us properly that the dead know nothing. At that time, he was lying peacefully in the tomb. How many people in hell heard his voice if that means Jesus was preaching? I'm sure if they heard his voice when they were there in hell, they could have repented and they could have followed Jesus. But when did he preach? The Bible says the dead, they know nothing. Take note that the spirits in prison are identified to, to be disobedient. And in the days of Noah, when you look at the way how it was interpreted, Noah was preaching maybe to the dead spirits because the people at that time did not believe what Noah was saying. And he preached for 120 years, and yet no one believed what he was saying until the last day when the, ra the rain started falling and people perished. We read from the Bible that only eight people were saved from being perished by the rain. During the days of Noah, people lived carelessly. They lived in sinful ways, just like what is happening right now in these uh, last days. And yet the scriptures, they are actually talking to each one of us on a daily basis to say, read and search the scriptures. You understand what God wants us to understand. There is also another passage which uh, oftentimes is not... Uh, is not uh, understood properly. The saw under the altar. The saw under the altar. The expression of this, the verse is also misinterpreted as a scorn, which portrays the souls of the martyrs who were seen metaphorically under the altar, crying for a revenge. The Bible tells us that the dead know nothing. Yes, many people were martyred during that time. And many are yet to be martyred in our days, during the last days. But that does not make, make, leave us in desperation to wonder what we are going to be in future or what. Because when we die, no matter what type of death we die, God promises us that the dead know nothing, but they are going to be resurrected on the resurrection morning. You, when you read in the book of Revelation, the fifth seal was opened as seen by John the Revelator. He saw a vision beneath the altar, the number of those who were killed because of following the name of Jesus. 
After this came the sins that are described in Revelation 18 and those which are truly truthful and called out of Babylon. God has always been available for his people. Even at the time of when you are feeling you are at your lowest point, God is always there. He is there. Even at the time when these Christians were being martyred, God was there and he was feeling the presence. And he was feeling the presence. And we are also saying, uh, God is only a prayer away. Each time when you face a, a, a challenging situation, God is just a prayer away. He is going to transform the situation that you might be passing through. The devil, indeed, at our, is, is at war against what we believe in. You know what the devil does? If he knows that you are actually saying the truth about God, about Jesus, he will always bring in a scenario that is going to do what? To discourage you and, and maybe distract the way how you are presenting, the way how you are trying to share your information about God. And yet at the same time, when you look at the way how, how the devil wants him to be uplifted, he will bring in so many sorts of things that are not actually true or they become so evil. Just imagine, there's a time when you look at the press or the media, the way how the devil is so published, published they, there is crime in this area, there is, uh, they are proud in that other area, and maybe all sorts of things that are happening which are not good. And yet, when he is put on the media, he feels good because he says he is actually being uplifted. In those moments when you are looking at those things that are like that, pray prayerfully, seek the Lord. Have you ever noticed the publicity of the criminals? One day, I'm, I still remember in one of our churches, they, there was a prison ministry, and they brought the, 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 the prisoners to come and give testimonies how they got into the, into the prisons. And they asked them, what do they crave to eat? And one of them said, I would, I would like to have sugar. And they wanted some presents. And the presents which were given to these sinners, these prisoners, were so many such that, you know, you would feel like, you know, they, are, they were doing the right thing to be in the prison or they did the correct thing to be in the prison. Why does the devil want to be so uplifted and not, the, and not Christ to be uplifted? Even those who judge the sinners, those who judge the criminals, you will find that there's a lot of corruption the way how they are going to twist the laws, they twist the, the information, and they let these sinners go out of the prisons instead of being rehabilitated, rehabilitated so that they can become repentant and become useful citizens. But they keep on twisting the laws and so many. So my prayer, uh, the, my beloved sisters and brothers, uh, even when we experience those times where we are being challenged to preach the word of God, Keep on holding and speak about God because the devil is going to fight against the word of God and he doesn't want you to see us preaching the word of God. So it is important to, uh, to have a scripture all the time in life. Have a scripture that is going to strengthen you, that is going to give you the authority to speak about Jesus regardless of the situation that you'll be experiencing. May God bless the reading of his word. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the lesson that we have had. We thank you, Heavenly Father. We hope that this message has touched one or two people who are listening, who listened to this lesson. We pray, Heavenly Father, that we don't become pillars, but we also want to enter the kingdom of, he of heaven. May you be with us as we dismiss now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.